Hey ho, howdy Wastelanders. It's Camping Kip here, founder of The Wasteland Camping Company. I'd like to take a moment of your time to walk you through one of our Wasteland camping builds. So grab yourself a Nuka Cherry and some fancy lads, and please, enjoy the tour. The build I'm showing today is one of our Wasteland Camping Company store builds. It's located in what used to be the town limits of Helvetia, West Virginia. This build, constructed by yours truly, was purposed to be a store and a rest stop for Wastelanders who still come to celebrate Foss Night, which, believe it or not, is still being carried out by those kooky robots who still live in Helvetia. Speaking of Foss Night, when constructing this camp, I wanted to have a staging area for the event. A place where people could gather and blow the Alphorn to get the event started. I found this idea to be ill thought out when people refused to put their mouths on a dirty horn soaked with scum and radiation. Now here we are at the front of the camp. I went for a broken geometric design. I wanted it to have a unique shape, but I also wanted it to have a woodsy campground feel to it as well, to go along with the wasteland camping theme. This is why I used all of the wood siding for the exterior and interior. Moving inside, you come to and through a unique wasteland camping creation. I call it the Tentrance. That's the words tent and entrance combined. Now that's just pure apocalyptic innovation, if I do say so myself. And to the power room. Let me just open this up for you. This whole camp is powered by a still working fusion generator that I scavenged from a local factory. Also, here in the power room, I have a workbench that I use to craft ammo and other miscellaneous stuff. In hindsight, it was probably not my brightest idea having the nuclear genie so close to the restaurant and everything else. Next up is the often regretted Junkies Food Dump. Junkies is our in-house eating establishment. It's run by none other than Junkie himself. Junkie's a collectron I found wandering the waste. I brought him back here and reprogrammed him to be my chef. But I do have to be forthright. Junkie has an odd fascination with junk that I've been unable to remove from his programming. This does lead to questionable ingredient choices in his prepared meals from time to time. Here at the food dump we have ample seating for four with a pleasant view of Helvetia to the south. Let's move back behind the kitchen. We make our way into the artistic space that Junkie uses to produce his culinary creations. I provided this robot with everything a robot chef needs to produce a hearty meal, including the finest ingredients this region has to offer. But as you can see, Junkie still implements unusual items when cooking from time to time. So please enjoy your meals with a healthy side of caution. Nice to see you too, Junkie. I just love songs. 
Moving on, we make our way to a pair of room displays. You see, this store primarily retails building and decor plans to be used by construction-minded individuals in the wasteland. The plans are dispensed by our automated vendor terminals located throughout the facility. Here in this section we have a room display that any crazed Mothman cultist is sure to find delightful. Going from crazy to cosmic, we have an outer space themed room for any Captain Cosmos fan. The intent of the room display is to inspire Wasteland campers as to what they can achieve by implementing our plans in their camp builds. They also serve to show campers what decor goes well together. Here we have our amphitheater which is primarily used for our tantalizing fireside stories. In case you aren't in the know, Fireside Stories is one of our exciting events we hold here at our Wasteland Camping Company stores. They always happen at midnight when the darkness of the wasteland is in full effect. These Fireside Stories are suspenseful narratives being spun by your host, Camping Kip. Accompanied by a delicious buffet of auditory delight as I strum the banjo in front of the fire. But the twist, and the best part in my humble opinion, is that all the stories are true. And there's more. The story is actually a quest that I'm bestowing to any adventure seeking traveler to accomplish. To which a reward is attained when said traveler returns with proof of accomplishment. It's a delightful experience to be had by all. Now moving on, we make our way back up to the second floor of the camp to another pair of room displays. This here building houses another autonomous vendor unit, as well as two opposing seasonal varieties. First we have Jolly St. Nick, oh hey Santa, in our Christmas room, honoring the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And with a stark contrast, we have a menagerie of the terrifying with our Halloween room. Such a handsome fellow. Marching on. Our attention draws to another ride area. Just past the rides is a little area that I set up for Junkie. I framed and mounted some posters of his heroes here. I have to say, I'm not too keen on his labeling on the dumpster here. Everybody's a comedian, I guess. In this upcoming building, we have another set of room displays and automated vendor units. The first display room in this building is based on Hubris Comics' Grognak the Barbarian. The second room in this building is based on the much aligned vault Tech Corporation. One thing I really enjoyed about this camp is its placement above the Buchanan River. Serene views are just waiting to be had by any weary traveler that comes to visit this camp. Speaking of weary, up here we have a very relaxing sitting area, as well as a fun set of photo stand-ins for the happy tourists of this festive land. Along this path and to the right we have what used to be called the radio room. The reason I called it that was there was an unusual youngin that went only by the name Punk that resided here. He stayed mostly in front of his ham radio talking to some group called the Network. He was an alright fellow, 
but a little repetitive in what he said. Thankfully, some time back, he packed up his things and moved along. So now we simply just use the space for planting another pseudoscience doohickory. I'm now going to guide you to the third floor of this establishment. Going back into the entrance of the camp, we'll make our way past the entrance. You'll notice a few carefully placed advertisement signs and some foliage to truly sell the outdoor camping experience to my visitors. Here are the twins. I wouldn't recommend getting on their bad side. I just love songs. Climbing these stairs, we enter the third and final floor, a workshop area. We offer this area as a courtesy to any war-torn adventurer who finds him or herself with equipment that could use a little spit and polish. This area is fully stocked with complimentary nuts, bolts, raw material, and just about every other doodad that may be useful in repair or crafting. Each nook is lit with a colored bulb to provide a festive atmosphere and look to the camp. At night, I have to say, it looks really pretty. Now back through the door, we get to a place to which you've all been waiting for. That would be the end of the store. I want to thank you for watching this tour of the Wasteland Camp and Company's Helvetia Decor Store. If you're ever in the area, please stop by and say howdy to your friend and neighbor. This is Camping Kill, and I pray that you find God in your travels.